Hello, my name is Pedro, I'm a research intern at PSR, and today I'm going to present the jump to cubo automatic formulation lining talk here at JumpDev Julia Com 2022. Briefly speaking about PSR, we are very active as a company in the Jump and Julia community. We have jump models running many research and industry applications all around the world. And all the codes you're going to see right now was designed and written by Thiago, by Joaquin and I, and with collaboration from Professor David Bernal, who gave us some theoretical guidance and also great research pointers throughout the project. Right, to talk about jump to cubo reformulation, we must first define what is cubo. For the non-initiated, Cubo stands for quadratic unconstrained binary optimization. That is, we have a quadratic objective function, we have no constraints, but that all variables must be binary, right? We usually write it in its matrix form. And in other words, it's we are doing here is solve max cut. That means, in some sense, that we are capable of representing many combinatorial and discrete optimization problems in this framework. In the other hand, it's usually NP-hard. So one might ask, why Cubo? And the short answer is because we have many amazing computers we can use to tackle these problems nowadays. And these recent advances were mainly brought by the D-Wave showcase with Quantum Annealing, which in some sense brought other developments in better simulated annealing algorithms, but also hardware accelerated digital annealing and many other quantum optimization through QA, OA, and also variational quantum eigensolvers, but also coherent Ising machines and simulation simulated bifurcation machines, and many other um, cubo-related um, devices, which are all amazing and very interesting and came out in the last years. So, now that we are already very excited about using cubo to power all this stuff, we should ask, how can I take my daily knapsack jump model and make it fit inside a cubo model. Right. We present to cubo.jl a new package to make this process automatically. It is available in the Julia General Registry next to you, and you can just begin using it right now. So how you do it? You just wrap your favorite solver with the to cubo optimizer and all the magic just happens. Right, what is going on? To cubo goes in between the jump and the solver and it's each drop on your source model and present to the solver a reformulated cube model. And that happens just transparently. And it performs variable encoding because all the variables must be binary. It does constraint processing because you can't have any constraints, right? You must encode them using penalty terms to be assembled into the executive function. And also, if needed, it performs quadrativation. It's just reducing the degree of the resulting polynomial, right? So it performs the, this reformulation using a virtual mapping mechanism, which allows for the, the package to keep track of the source and the target structures and perform basic jump queries and also retrieve results and all the kind of stuff. And that happens in a transparent manner. The user doesn't even notice what's going on. When the results are queried, for example, it appears as if you were using a regular solver. 
And despite it looks pretty much like a regular um, mathematical optimization tool, it operates pretty much like a compiler. It has its own internal implementations where a lot of code enhancements take place and we can draw um, some figures that it looks pretty much like what a regular compiler would do. If you think about Julia and the tool chain that it uses to generate code that runs on bare metal, when you are talking about the computers you mentioned before, Cubo is the equivalent to assembly code, right? So you want to write code in a higher level language, which is a jump DSL, and you want it to be translated, to be compiled into a low level Cubo program. So there is just one piece that is missing here, and is the solver, right? If you think about what we've presented so far, you have GLPK receiving some weird problems to solve, and we are not reaching the computers we want to reach. In this sense, we present another package called a neo.jl, which is already available too, that performs this step of presenting into a common API. It's a sense method met of interface to present a common API for many Cubo solvers to be included and integrated into the jump ecosystem. And how it works, it comes with some optimizer bundle in this and including the D-Wave simulated in the optimizer and you can just try it out. It's amazing. So the idea is to build this environment where you can very rapidly plug in new algorithms, new hardware, experimental software, people developing cubo solving algorithms by their own in a um, way that allows us to test them, to benchmark and integrate them consistently um, to the jump um, ecosystem and family of solvers. Right? So before finishing our talk, I want to present the roadmap. We want to expand to Cubo support, uh, adding more constraints to its translation possibilities. We also want to, as you mentioned, to integrate existing binary quadratic solvers, mainly open source ones, into Jump using Neo. We are also interested in investigating architecture-driven problem formulation, like I know which hardware I want to address and to better fit the process trees, and also to deploy applications for the energy sector using the two chains just presented. I like to make some acknowledgements first to my team, to our team at PSR. Um, mainly for them to be so supportive and also enthusiastic about this project, namely Mario Pereira and Sergio Granville, Thiago Novaes, and Pedro Bittencourt. Also, uh, I'd like to thank my advisor at the university, Professor Priscilla Lima and Philippe França, who created Satyrus, which is a compiler that takes in such satisfiability constraints and generates other sorts of optimization code and from which many of the ideas present in this work came from. I would like mm, to mention BTQJSON and TQ and TQ.jl from people at Los Alamos National Lab, which were very important to the building of this project in many senses. It's was a great inspiration. We would like also to thank to thank people at PyCubo and the Wave Neo for the great work at the Python realm, and also lastly to EAL.jl, which was very inspiring into taking quantum applications to the Julia community. Thank you, and see you soon at the question. Goodbye.